Al Jama launched its election manifesto in Lanasia, the south of Johannesburg, on Saturday, with job creation at the core of its promises. In the event that Al Jama wins an election and takes control of the country, party leader Hanif Hendricks um, promises a complete overhaul of the judiciary. However, the question is how realistic are these promises? Well, stick around to find out. Good evening, my name is Gershwin Brooks, standing in for Tabo Molokwane. Uh, welcome to the edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we are joined in studio by Gauteng Chairperson of Al Jama, Tapelo Ahmad, and he, and he is here, of course, to help us unpack the party's election manifesto. Now, good evening to you, Tapelo, and thank you for joining us this evening. What I'd just like to know from you is that we understand that the party uh, manifesto was uh, supposedly ready or launched about two weeks ago, only for that to happen this past weekend. What caused the delay? Thank you, Khashu. Um Let me start by greeting the audience at home, the viewers, and then uh, let me wish those who are observing Ramadan, those who are fasting, a, a blessed Ramadan, and may God shower his mercy upon them. But not only limited to Muslims, but anyone who finds his solace in God, they must indeed, uh, God must indeed shower his blessings upon them and ensure that uh, he blesses their future endeavors. Uh, the manifesto was supposed to have happened in uh, uh, two weeks' time. So that wasn't a, a manifesto in an actual fact. Mm. It was a prep to the manifesto that took place on Saturday. So it was, it was more of an abstract uh, manifesto. Uh, it wasn't our launch. Uh, we were finalizing and creating a hype and a PR to enhance this particular, uh, create awareness basically mm. about this coming uh, previous manifesto, not the coming rather, but the previous which has happened on Saturday over the weekend. Yeah, so basically that's where we are right now. And it was a successful event. We had it in Lenesia. Um, you know, Lenesia is one of the wards that we are leading in the city of Johannesburg. Uh -huh. So we, we also have a word. So how do you determine the strength of a political party? Uh, a political party also becomes stronger when they also run a word. Uh, mm -hmm. You might find parties that are proportionally represented and they, they are stronger in quality in terms of the numbers, but they do not understand the structures of governance because they are not governing as yet. So we are governing a ward in Indonesia in Ward 9. And on, on that point, I mean, you yourself, you are a former mayor here in Johannesburg. Currently, Al Jamar has the mayoral seat, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. Yeah, in Johannesburg. And we'll get back to that in Thank just so a few. Yeah. We had, um, uh, obviously, multiple parties come out and present the election manifestos to the people of South Africa in a hope to get their votes over the last uh, couple of months. And they all share certain core values or core promises that they deal with. The key amongst them is the creation of jobs, the alleviation of crime and poverty. Um, however, you have promised decent jobs. Tell us what these kinds of jobs are and how this policy implementation will be different from all other parties. Look, uh, for us it's just not a promise. For us it's also interacting with the society. What, what, what fosters a good governance? It's stakeholder engagement. How do you do it? You go out, you engage the stakeholders, not only, uh, I'm not limiting this to the corporate sector or this to the government or the enablers. I'm also encouraging the public at large, the voters at large to participate and also share their views on how do they see it best fitting to them when we're talking about the decent employment uh, uh, opportunities or a decent job for all, let me mm. say a decent job for all. So Indonesia has done it, uh, one of the countries in, in, in Asia. It has done it and it, it, they were successful in it. They, 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 they set aside the social grants, mm -hmm. right? And then they have prioritized on uh, creating more employment opportunities. Libya done it uh, during the time of Mahmoud Gaddafi, if you were to, to follow the history of Libya. So we, we as Al Jama, uh, you, you, you rightfully said I was the mayor uh, previously, but not only the mayor, I was also a member of mayoral committee uh, mm -hmm. during the, the, the period of the late Jeff Makubo. Uh, I, was, I was in his team at the time. So that we, as Al Jama, the department that we were overseeing, I was overseeing planning department, and we were successful in tilting the scale and ensuring that we are putting all mechanisms in place 
in the city, I would, like, I would like to isolate it to the city so that you can understand or the viewers can understand that where we govern, we understand the fundamentals of us using the levers of power to transform the status quo of the residents. Mm. So we, we, we've approved a, a mega project in the southern farm, in the peripheries of the city. Mm -hmm. So if you understand the construct of the city, the, the poor will be placed in the peripheries, either in the south, which is the region G, from Eldorado Park up to perhaps Sibokeng or up to perhaps uh, Orange Farm, yeah, sure. but inclusive of, of Soweto, because these communities were built beyond the mining belt. So they were excluded inherently from the communities and uh, the peripheries in the north, uh, your deep Lord and the likes. So in the north, you would know that the first sauna of uh, the president. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm also going to quote uh, the first sauna, to cite rather, not to quote, to cite the first sauna because uh, we also need to understand the importance of the IGR, right? We cannot be the autonomy as the city. The province can be the autonomy. Uh, national can be autonomy. Yeah. After we constitute government, we also need to focus and foster the IGR, intergovernmental relations. We, as Aljama, we, we ensured that the mega project that the president set aside, 74 billion, yeah. uh, it went to council and it was approved, right? And in the south, which is the southern farm, uh, when I was the mayor, after we were disrupted, Tape, what, look, what, just, just, to, what okay. I'll have to do is I, I'll yeah. have to push you for time on that for one time, because awesome. there's some key issues that I really want to pick yeah, up yeah. with you on as well. Yeah. Um, and, and unfortunately, we're running short of time now. Yeah. But obviously, uh, there's a couple of things that I want to touch on that's being gender-based violence and okay. what, you, uh, uh, what your proposal is around yeah. a major issue that's yeah. a serious threat in this country. Okay. But the second issue is also the rights charter that you make mention of, especially within the context that we have a Bill of Rights. Now, but before we go on and add break, Hendricks also, that's Hanif Hendricks, uh, mentioned the issue of the rights charter um, and, and the plan to implement that. Um, and, and I'd like to chat to the, you about that after the break. But obviously, having been founded 17 years ago with the goal of changing um, the political landscape of the nation, Al Jamaa um, is one of the several po political parties attempting to win over voters um, during this up and coming election that has been announced on the 29th of May. Now, let us park it right there for now. More on this right after this particular ad break. Welcome back. You are still watching Soweto today. Thank you for joining and staying with us. We are still in conversation with the Gauteng chairperson of Al Jamaa, Tapelo Ahmad, as we unpack the party's uh, election manifesto. Now, Tapelo, thank you again for staying with us. Just before the break, I mentioned obviously um, your, your party leader being Hanif Hendricks, um, mentioning the issue of the rights charter that you plan on uh, to implement. Uh, should you gain state power. Now tell us about this considering that we already have a constitution in place and that constitution contains in chapter 2 the Bill of Rights. How do the two, two make thank, sense? Thank, thank you so much. So in parting short, um, uh, first let me just wrap up and I, I want to say uh, we would turn, wherever we govern, we'll turn it an industrial site and uh, construction site so that we can create more opportunities for employment. But over and above that, remember the employment is part of uh, 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 our right. So the, the, right, the right charter, one, let me cite the water issue. All right. In the constitution, it is said um, everyone has a right to water. Mm. What does that then mean? A right to water, it means that it's not access to water. Access to water, it's you avail water mm -hmm. for the residents, right? But if you are saying we have the right to water, it means I can walk into any store or an outlet. And if I find the water in the fridge, I can take that water and drink it. That's the right. It's my right. Correct. Am I correct or wrong? Well, it depends on interpretation. Your because interpretation. unfortunately you have to yeah. interpret rights. Yeah, you'll have to interpret rights. But my right is that I, I have full access. It's not just limited access. So in other words, so that's the Aljama understanding of the right. That's our Aljama understanding. Uh, the right to children, it's imperative, all right? Uh, the right to children, it's imperative. Children need to be protected across board because we are founded on the principle of faith, 
Uh, we are founded on the principle of justice. We are founded on the principles of Ubuntu. Or we are founded in the principles of humanitarian. But we are not only, when I say faith, we are not only limited to Muslims. Uh, we are a platform for all communities. Any person can join Aljama and any person has a right to vote for Aljama. Uh -huh. Right. So, so, so it, it, it is an open end type of dialogue. Uh, there are rights that are infringing upon other people's rights, uh, or there are rights that are pushed down the throats of people. So in, in, in our right charter, we are not only domesticating those rights, we also look at the international justice across board and, and atrocities and genocides that are happening in various parts of the world. Because we've, we've realized that the charterists that are advocating for rights they only, they only uh, take precedence, the, the rights that only takes precedence, it's animal rights as opposed to human rights. So very yeah. quickly, I mean, how does it then match up to the, to the constitution that we already have, considering that Look, as a country we, we the, have the constitution? The constitution has to be repealed. The constitution, it's, it's founded on the principles of a rainbow nation. Okay. Right. Uh, the colors of the rainbow do not merge. This is why we are disenfranchised as a society. This is why we still have Soweto. We are not yet integrated. And that uh, the lack of integration emanates from the very same constitution. We have a right to electricity, but we have load shedding. We have a right to I, I, decent I, I, education. I, I, I think I get it, and I think the viewers get it as well, especially in terms of what you said, that the, the constitution in its current shape and Correct. form would have to be, it has to be repealed. Uh, repealed. Um, just very briefly, if you can just touch on, before I, I touch on, um, or, or maybe we should go to this, Tapelopa, as your party leader, Hanif Hendricks, mentioned the openness of Al Jamaa. Uh, to work with other political parties, the likes of uh, uh, Mkonto Wesizwe um, and the EFF, but to the exception of parties like the Inkata Freedom Party. Tell us why the acceptance of some political parties, uh, you know, why are you accepting some political parties but not others? If you remember one of the campaigns that we did in Johannesburg, it was to declare the city of Johannesburg, when we were in the opposition, a free apartheid zone. Mm. So the fundamental uh, principles of those political parties, they are, there's a likelihood that they will bring a white rule, a racist white rule. So we are not in a position to work with such political parties. This is why even the Democratic Alliance, when they approached us on the issue of principle, we understand that they are aligned to the values of apartheid uh, or the white supremacist. So we are not in a position to even sit on the same table unless they would change the way they think. The IFP, we know what they represent. It, you know, when you read uh, Franz Fanon, there's a book, uh, Black Skins, White Masks. Mm -hmm. So at the time, uh, the, the, the IFP was the action SA of our time. So I, I need to get on to this one because obviously uh, your president uh, spoke about the marital process that you have worked out um, in terms of the Islamic uh, Sharia law. And we understand that most Muslim majority countries have opposed advancing LGBT and GNC rights uh, as well as recognition. So give us a picture of, of what marital status would look like in South Africa, considering that South Africa is one of the few countries on the continent that is open in terms of marriage. Uh, including that of LGBTI and GNC persons. Look, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dwell, I wouldn't tap into the LGBTI uh, a dialogue uh, because where we are, we are founded by the principles of religion. Um, so we are a political platform for all communities. So the question of LGBT, uh, it's the same issue as the right charter. When I said certain rights shouldn't be imposed or certain rights shouldn't infringe on other rights, right? Mm. So everyone, they have the right to exist. Every human being has a right to exist. Fair enough. Fair enough, right? So if a human being says, if I say, personally, I, I, I don't want to work with the Inkata Freedom Party, for argument's sake, it shouldn't be a train smash because I can't impose my values and my ideology on the Inkata Freedom Party, but I have a choice to say, I do not have a belonging in the IFP or in the Democratic Alliance or in the Action SA. Similarly, there has to be equal understanding of the LGBT uh, question to say they shouldn't also push it down the throats of the people that sure. do not share the same views. 
I want you to take a listen um, along with the viewers to one particular statement that was said by Hanif Hendricks at the manifesto that I believe raised an eyebrow and will come back to this and will obviously uh, come back to discuss that particular issue. Women mustn't work. They must chill out and relax at home. The men must work for them. If they work and make a lot of money, that's fine. The process that myself and the minister worked out is so simple that once an imam in a mosque gives you the certificate, you go to home affairs, you get a valid South African marriage certificate. And on the certificate, the type of marriage is not gay marriage, is not Queen Victoria's kind of marriage, it's a Muslim marriage and the consequences are in terms of the Islamic Sharia. So we touched on that very same issue now in, in our conversation. And I mean, um, we obviously live in a country based on equality. And I think also another issue that then immediately links back to the question about LGBTI and GNC rights in terms of marriage is also another comment that your president uh, mentioned was that women should not work and allow men to do the working instead with a party whose slogan says uh, that it is for all communities. How should women feel included if uh, these are the sentiments that your party holds, which would be contradictory to being inclusive to all. Not necessarily. Uh, not necessarily. Look, uh, what the president is saying is at the minimal. Uh, I call him president. Are you uh, sure? Sure. Yeah. Of course, I'm not making reference to uh, the president of the republic. So the president, what he's saying is at the minimal, right? So at the minimal would mean if a woman is wearing a stiletto, and she goes to shopping wearing a stiletto mm -hmm. or she goes to a funeral wearing a stiletto right and when after a period of time they decide to remove those stilettos and they wear the palms or the pushings uh, maybe it emanates from the discomfort of that particular shoe mm -hmm. am, I, am i making sense so I, I it has no bearing on me to criticize to say but you had a very beautiful shoe but now why do you change, you understand? So what the president says, or what the party advocates for, is that we can't, we, we, we will always protect the women's rights, the women's rights, not the human, but the women's rights. As the political organization, we will always protect the rights of the children. But it, what the president has said, it is in a min, as a minimal per se, in a sense that women should advocate what mm -hmm. they want, and we will support them. The same way, even when they decide to live at home, to become uh, housewives. Because there would be women who say, marry me, I want to be a housewife. There are various sure. women who've, who've approached me and said, marry me, I want to be a housewife. I'd, I'd love to get into a long conversation <laughs> with you around the yeah. notion of what equality actually means. But yeah. we are going to pause it here for yeah. now. More on the conversation after this ad break. Welcome back. Uh, you are still watching Soweto today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us, of course. We are almost at the end of the show with our guest, Tapelo Ahmad, who is Al Jamaa's Gauteng chairperson. Ahmad is detailing the party's election manifesto, which was launched at this past weekend. Now, having mentioned, obviously, all of the promises that have been raised in the manifesto, are you confident that you'll be able to attract new voters? And what I'm also interested in, voters that are maybe, that fall outside, you know, that are a little more diverse, that fall outside of your thinking based on what we've discussed thus far. It's, it's, it's not just uh, the thinking, but let me say, let us not confuse equality to responsibilities, right? Uh, there's equality and there's responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So, so, Generally, uh, the nature would dictate that certain responsibilities are done by certain people and certain roles in society are done by certain people. Uh, even the political structures, uh, uh -huh. those who are also advocating for the same equality, they have what they call democratic centralism. In as much as there's democracy in their structures, but there's a center that holds, which is uh, the responsibility of that particular center. But uh, going to the question, yes, uh, we have attracted, or we're still attracting, uh, the voters and the supporters and the support base out of the Islamic faith. Al Jama is growing not only in Muslim communities, but it's also growing in Soweto. 
uh, Al the mayor himself of the city of Johannesburg, I would like to send a shout out to him. He's not a Muslim, Kabilo Kwamanda, Mayor Kabilo Kwamanda, he's not a Muslim. So he's a, he's a testimony to say we are welcoming all communities, irrespective of uh, creed and belief. On, on, on that very basis, um, I, I just want to ask you very quickly, Tapelo, before, yeah. because we, we, we're very short on time at the moment. In terms of you holding the mayorship, the current mayor holding the mayorship, do you feel that you've done an effective job in demonstrating to South Africans that Al Jamaa is ready to govern? I, in my period, yes, I've done a lot. In, in that three months, mm -hmm. I have done a lot. Uh, it is unfortunate that we have disrupted the ecosystem mm -hmm. and the media mainstream was sympathetic mm -hmm. to the previous administration because my predecessor was a media darling. And that disruption caused a huge uh, outcry, in, in, precisely in, in, in the fraternity of media. When I walk, I walk, I interact with everyone. I interact with people in Soweto, in Alexandra, Deep yeah. Wood. People, they, 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 there are people who feel that you shouldn't have resigned. What, what is the one great thing that you did in your mayorship? In my mayorship? Did? Yeah. It's not only one. But I mean the one that you can point to immediately, based on the limited time. When I got had. into the office, um, when I got into the office, this, we found the city's, the city's coffers sitting at 400 billion. I mean, 400 million. Mm -hmm. And the net worth is 80 billion, 83 billion. Mm -hmm. There was no money in the city on the basis that there wasn't an ecosystem of an administ administrative wing. There was no city manager, there was no CFO, sure, there sure. was no group operation officer. Are you saying and that they you couldn't recruited even for get this? the grants? You remember sure. that 2 billion yeah, yeah. Uh, loan? Uh, my predecessor couldn't even get it. Sure. So that's how we started to put the ecosystem together and we started collecting and we took the, the loan. Great. You know, we started collecting. Tapelo, unfortunately, we're out of time. We'll have to leave it there. Yeah. That was Tapelo Ahmad, who is the chairperson of Al Jama, uh, the political party based here in Gauteng, helping us make a better, uh, make better sense rather of the party's election manifesto and what the way forward is in terms in terms of how the party is looking uh, at carrying out its campaign ahead of the provincial and national elections in May. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode simply by sending us an email to Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us on 081-531-8857. From myself, Gershwin Brooks, and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching. Thank you for coming. Thank you.